Hey everyone, today you'll be learning about the major groups of invertebrates. Hello world, I'm Christopher Rodriguez. I'm one of the creators of Animals in Time, and I'm here to give you a 24 part video series describing common scientific topics in ways everyone can understand. I'll be giving you the what, the how, and the why you should care about all these topics. Now, this 24-part series will correspond with Animals in Time, Volume 1. However, you do not need to be using Animals in Time resources to benefit from these videos. So, let's get started! I know I said back in Week 1 that nowadays all organisms are categorized using the Carl Linnaeus taxonomy system, but that's the scientific method. There's an easier way to sort organisms, and you only need two categories. Every organism is either a vertebrate or an invertebrate. This week, I'll be focusing on invertebrates, while next week, I'll talk about vertebrates. When we say that something is an invertebrate, it just means that that organism does not have a backbone or a set of vertebrae. Doesn't mean that they're scared of everything, they just don't have a backbone. One of the main reasons we humans have backbones is for our brains to tell our bodies what to do. Now, invertebrates don't have backbones, so instead they have little cells that carry the signal from their brains to their bodies. The major groups of invertebrates are sponges, stinging cell animals, flatworms, roundworms, segmented worms, mollusks, sea stars, and arthropods. These sponges might look like plants, but they're actually animals. Yeah, they're animals that sit on the bottom of the ocean, surrounded by water, and don't move. Totally animals. Now sponges filter water through their bodies to catch little bits of food. These might look a bit like the things you have in your bathtub, but they're really scratchy. The things in your bathtub are called sponges because people actually used to use sea sponges to scrub themselves. I'm glad we use sponges made of other materials now. Ugh, it would be so weird to be scrubbing myself with some dead animal that used to be alive. Ugh. Next, we have stinging cell animals. Well, I guess that's kind of vague, so I'll tell you that another name for them is nidarians. I, that really didn't help much, did it? Things like coral and jellyfish are nidarians, and so are anemones, 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 ugh, whatever. Nidarians use stings called nematocysts to catch their food. These nematocysts are like coiled up springs with sharp tips. When something touches them, they shoot out and out! That's why you should never touch jellyfish or coral or anemones, anemones. I'm an 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 you know what? I'm done. I'm, I, I'm done. I'm done. Now we get to the worms. Flatworms, roundworms, and segmented worms. These guys are pretty nasty. Flatworms and roundworms are both really tiny, and they're both parasites. That means they live inside other organisms and eat them from the inside out. They're so scary. They could be inside me. They could be inside you. They're pretty much the same, except that flatworms are flat and roundworms are, well, round. You get the point. Earthworms, leeches, and tube worms are all segmented worms. They're a bit bigger than flatworms and roundworms, but they're still pretty disgusting. Can we move on to the mollusks, please? Mollusks are anything like snails, sea snails, scallops, clams, oysters, nautili, really anything with a shell. Some mollusks don't have shells though, like octopus and squid. Yep, there always have to be rule breakers in every bunch. Next are sea stars. You might call them starfish, but they're not really even fish. Sheesh, what is it with all these fish that aren't even really fish? First dolphins, now starfish? Next you're gonna tell me that whales aren't fish either, right? Now, sea stars are also called asteroids for some reason, which doesn't, well, actually it kind of makes sense because sea stars look like stars and asteroids look like stars that are falling from the sky. 
So if a sea star fell from the sky into the ocean, but it's already in the ocean, you know what, never mind. Now, sea stars might look all cute and you might want to take them home, but they're actually terrifying predators. They slink across the ocean floor, use their hideously strong arms to pry open the shells of clams and oysters, and then spit out their own stomachs to digest what's inside. I know, terrifying. Finally, we have arthropods, which is just a fancy name for things like insects, spiders, scorpions, and crustaceans, like crabs and lobsters. Basically, all you need to know about them is that they're pretty small, and they all have all kinds of wings, legs, stingers, pinchers, proboscises, whips, thoraxes, abdomens, ugh. I'm so glad we're done with that. So there you go. The main groups of invertebrates are sponges, stinging cell animals, flatworms, roundworms, segmented worms, mollusks, sea stars, and arthropods. Whew, that made me hungry. When's lunch? Here we go. Mm-mm. A nice, big plate full of invertebrates. Mm -mm. Okay, so this might seem pretty disgusting, but do you know who loves it? Ella the Eagle. If you have the Animals in Time Volume 1 activity book, the science page for this week is going to have you draw a bunch of invertebrates for Ella's lunch. But since you're such a pro at drawing invertebrates, that's going to be so easy. Also, here's a fun craft for you to try. When my little sisters studied invertebrates, they made these cute little chandeliers out of paper, yarn, and pipe cleaners. You can do anything with these things. You can hang them in your door, hang them in your room, scare the daylights out of your other siblings, anything. Now come back next week because I'll be telling you about vertebrates. And I promise they're a lot nicer.